Let's define biochemistry. It is the study of chemical composition and reactions of living matter. Um, all chemicals can either be organic or inorganic. Inorganic compounds uh, would include water, salts, and many acids and bases. Uh, and they typically do not contain carbon for inorganic compounds, although some may. Carbon dioxide, for example, and carbon monoxide are considered inorganic compounds. Organic compounds include any compounds that do have carbon, with some exceptions that I mentioned earlier, like carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Uh, typically, organic compounds are going to have carbon and hydrogen, and they may also have nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, oxygen, and so on. Uh, some um, Major organic compounds found in living things include carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and nucleic acids. Uh, they contain carbon and are usually large, and they are covalently bonded instead of, uh, instead of ionic bonds. So they share, the bonds between the atoms share electrons. Uh, both inorganic and organic are essential for life. So we're going to look at organic compounds. Uh, we're going to start with water. Uh, I'm sorry, I... We're going to look at inorganic compounds. Uh, so we'll look at water. Water is the most abundant or inorganic compound. It accounts for 60 to 80 percent of the volume of a living cell. Uh, it is the most important inorganic compound because of its properties. In fact, if water did not have its properties, then life on its, as we know it wouldn't exist. Recall that water is a bent molecule and the water molecule, the oxygen pulls in the electrons a little harder, so there's partial negative charge on this side and partial positives, making it a polar molecule. The properties that are important include a high heat capacity, high heat of vaporization. Uh, it is a polar molecule, so uh, it can dissolve uh, lots of polar and ionic substances. Water has a reactivity, and water can provide cushioning. So, um, Many of these properties are related to the fact that water is polar and can form uh, hydrogen bonds uh, with other water molecules. And so these dotted lines over here in these diagrams show the, the um, hydrogen bonding. This is for solid water, though. The water molecules lock into place, and they're actually further apart than in liquid. So this makes water less dense, which is unique for water and why water or, or ice floats. Here the water molecules are freely moving around, though they are still strongly attracted, so these hydrogen bonds are being made and broken. I will often use the analogy of uh, water molecules shaking hands with other water molecules, and that takes time. So they shake hands, making a bond, and then breaking it uh, with other water molecules. And then in the gas state, well, there has to be enough energy to free the water molecules, and then they'd be freely moving like any gas would as water vapor. So uh, one of the reasons uh, or properties for water is it has a high heat capacity, which means it has the ability to absorb and release heat with little change in temperature. So water can absorb lots of heat and not change. And the reason for that is it requires a lot of energy to disrupt that hydrogen bonding that we've been talking about. And the important part here is that prevents sudden changes in temperature. Uh, and so our bodies won't change temperature with within seconds it would take much longer to do that uh, water has a high heat of vaporization which means it requires lots of energy large amounts of heat energy to actually cause the water molecules to move uh, freely away from each other and this is because we have to prov provide enough energy to break all hydrogen bonding uh, for every molecule that's released the result here is that water serves as a useful cooling mechanism because it has to absorb a lot of heat. So it gives this cooling effect when water turns from uh, liquid to uh, gas. Water is a good polar solvent. So water has polar solvent properties. Um, it dissolves and associates ionic substances and polar substances. If it's a polar substance, then it, the water molecules will just dissolve it. For ionic substances, the ions will dissociate. The useful thing to remember here is this, that like dissolves like because water molecule has partial negative and partial positive sides to it. Um, then those uh, are attracted to other polar molecules or to ions, like uh, the case of uh, sodium chloride here in this diagram right here. 
So you can see how the water molecules are going to form uh, these uh, hydration layers around charged or polar molecules. So here, the negative side of the oxygen surrounds the positive sodium ion and moves it away from the salt crystals. And then uh, the opposite side of water mo molecules will surround the anion uh, chloride and keep it separate from each other. Uh, so water can do this to form these hydration layers, even around large uh, charged or polar molecules. For example, proteins. The proteins can be polar, have a polar nature to them. They could be charged, have a charged nature to them, and so water can uh, help dissolve them. Um, and this is important because water then can become a major transport medium uh, for transporting substances because those substances can dissolve in the water, then the water itself can, can transport. The, the materials. Water does uh, place a role in reactivity. It is, for example, a necessary part of reactions called hydrolysis, which means using water to split. Lysis, or to lyse, means to split. Uh, and dehydration uh, synthesis reactions, anytime we make bigger um, molecules, we have to remove the equivalent of a water. So this is kind of just diagrammed here below. This represents a large molecule, and we are using a water molecule to come in here and break this bond right here. So what happens is the water, the H2O or HOH, breaks apart into an H and an OH, and the addition of that water ends up helping to split the water uh, or the large organic molecule. Energy is also going to be released during this process when you break down. We've also called these earlier catabolic. So this is typically typical of catabolic reactions or reactions that break down stuff. And then for dehydration synthesis, here we would have to remove the equivalent of a water so we can take this hydrogen from this molecule and this hydroxyl from this molecule. And when we remove them, that makes water here. And the end result is a new covalent bond and a larger molecule. Energy would be required for this and these are more referred to as uh, anabolic or uh, reactions or building reactions. You need kind of both uh, to stay alive. You need to be breaking down food molecules and then that food, those food, the energy from the food molecules can be used to, to do the work, biological work inside the cells. Water can also serve as a, a nice cushioning agent uh, so it can protect organs from physical trauma. For example, uh, surrounding your brain and spinal cord is this cerebral spinal fluid which can cushion uh, your nervous, your the organs of your nervous system. Salts are ionic compounds that, di that dissociate and separate into ions in water. Um, so they're going to separate into cations, which are recalled positively charged ions, and anions, which are negatively charged. And uh, this is not going to include hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Uh, so we'll talk about those later. Uh, so generally, uh, any any other types of ions that dissociate would be considered salts. Uh, the most famous one here is uh, sodium chloride or table salt. If that's a solid and we put it in water, then the water molecules are going to be attracted because of their polar nature, the water molecules are. And so we would form hydration, hydration layers around the positive sodium ions and hydration layers around the negative anion or chloride ions. And we're going to write AQ to show that they are dissolved in water. The AQ stands for aqueous, like aqua. Uh, salts, uh, or the ions, once they're dissolved in water, they're, they, they can be referred to as electrolytes because once they're in water, the water itself, or the solution with those ions, is capable of conducting electric currents. Uh, so they're, that's why they're called electrolytes. Uh, so these ions do play a specialized role in body functions, for example, sodium ions, potassium ions, calcium ions, and iron uh, are all an important part of normal uh, body or cell function. Uh, so this makes ionic balance uh, vital for homeostasis. If you don't have salt balance, uh, then uh, uh, that can be a problem. Um, common salts in the body include sodium chloride. That's this one. This one is called calcium carbonate. Then potassium chloride and calcium phosphate are also important salts found in the body. Uh, so uh, a little clinical aside here, uh, but relevant is uh, 
We're dealing with ionic balance, as we mentioned a while ago, it's vital for homeostasis. Uh, one organ that helps play a role in uh, ion balance and water balance is the kidneys. Uh, so they help us maintain uh, electrolyte balance. If your electrolyte balance is disrupted uh, and you're having trouble with homeostasis there, then basically all of your organ systems are going to stop functioning. So uh, salt balance or electrolyte balance is very important.